What's up guys, welcome back to Ally in Hand. We've got the new PS Play app to cover here on the ROG Ally, allowing you to stream your PS4 or PS5 to your ROG Ally or Windows device. I've been waiting a while for this one. I've used this app a lot on the G Cloud and my phone and tablet, so it's exciting to see it here finally on these handhelds for Windows. So let's get into it. A few days ago, at the time of making this video, there was the Reddit post announcing this launch by the dev here and a link to the store to be able to go buy the license. PS Play has always been a paid for app, but it works really, really well. There's all kinds of features that come with this, and I'm sure it'll be getting updates. The cool thing here, too, is if you get a Windows license, the Linux version that's coming that I'll be using on the Steam Deck is going to be included in that license. But you go to the website here and you do a typical purchase of your license, and then you're going to get a copy of that sent over to the email that you used, and there's also going to be an order record that you'll be able to see here as well once you place this order. So they also have a link here once you're done that you'll be able to go to the GitHub to download uh, PS Play and be able to install it. So we click that here and we'll go over to take a look at that and we'll grab uh, PS Play. I'll have links for the Reddit post and for this GitHub and all that in the description as well, but it's also really easy to find this stuff and to set up this app. It's nothing really major or different from anything else installing here on Windows. So now that we have that downloaded, I'll go to my downloads. We're going to go ahead and install on the Legion Go here. Again, it doesn't matter if I'm on the Ally, the Claw, the Go. This is all the same install process. Just get it installed, launch PS Play, and then we'll be able to go start getting into all the setup options and everything here. So we'll open this up, and of course, the first thing we're going to get hit with is the activation with the license key. So you'll be able to go grab that from your order page uh, where you uh, over on the website, or you'll be able to go into your email that they sent you and grab your activation license code. So I'll put my email in that I used to order, also put my license in, and there we go. I'm activated and ready to register a PlayStation. So I have my PS5. That's what we're going to concentrate on here. So I'll click on register, PS5, and we're gonna need that registration number. This is the pin number you get from your console. So over in your PS5 settings or your PS4, you're gonna be going in on linking your system, remote play, and link device here. Of course, make sure enable remote play is on there as well. And then we'll get a pin number with 300 seconds to go put that into our device. So I'll put that into the Legion Go or the Ally or whatever I'm using, register, and then we're gonna to need to log in uh, to our PSN account and bring the link over. So I'm gonna open this up. We go ahead and log into our PlayStation account. Once I do that, we get this white redirect page. We're gonna copy that link. Once I copy that, I can go paste it inside the PS Play app. So we'll go do that. And then that should get us linked up. And there we go, PS Play successfully registered with your PlayStation. And there's my PS5, and we're ready to start remote play. And there's, of course, a bunch of settings and tweaking you can do with this. I haven't really tweaked anything at the time of making this video. I normally would. I use PS Play a lot on my G Cloud and, and on my iPhone and all that. But as far as going through the settings here, of course, you've got your resolution here that you can set. We're going to do 1080p, 60 FPS, bitrate. I would typically do manual 15,000 or 12,000 all the way up to 25, um, depending on what I'm getting into here. For the most part on this video, I pretty much just leave things um, on auto and I'll adjust things later on and tweak for all the different networks. We have aspect ratio stuff here, uh, confirm action uh, for sleep and options. Stretch and zoom. If you happen to be on like a go or something, you could stretch and zoom that. Otherwise, we'll be native. We got Vulcan and Vulcan compatibility here. I've also used the regular Vulcan. HEVC decoder, definitely. Um, no HDR on this device. You can mess with VSync if you want, though I haven't seen the need for it just yet on the Ally uh, for me here on these settings. So pretty good there now. We've also got audio, which I haven't adjusted yet, but you might have to mess with that a little bit. Gamepad, vibration and whatnot. Keyboard, this is good. This is all the hotkeys, the way this is set up for all the different controls, including the PlayStation button, touchpad, and all that. So again, you might want to set some hotkeys up uh, to kind of be able to hit those quicker if you don't always want to use the touchscreen. I like to do start in full screen mode as well, and you can easily get in and out of that uh, here too with PS Play. And then experimental and logging. So that's pretty much what we'll go with as far as our settings and mess around. I'll close that and reopen it, and it'll go right into full screen. If you don't close and reopen, uh, that won't kick in. So there we go. Now we're ready and all set up here to be able to get into uh, actually streaming our PS5, which would be local and remote connect, which I was able to test both here and just kind of try them out uh, in the house on the different networks and see how this would work. Now what's cool on the bottom here, we got our PlayStation button, mic button, and then we also have our full screen and minimized and then our disconnect over here. So all we have to do is touch the bottom of the screen of the stream there and those will always pop up for us and we can get into that.
There's also keyboard shortcuts you can bind, like I showed you in the settings. And of course, with the hotkey setups on these handhelds, we could certainly bind some shortcuts and make like the PlayStation button or some of the other things even easier, or if you didn't want to use the touchpad. But yeah, all in all, pretty good setup there. Now, as far as remote connection, like away from home or on another network, if you go and do that manually, you can do that with your port forwarding, your IP address for your PlayStation, for your home network and all of that. Or what I tried here was automatic remote connection and streaming. This is an experimental feature that automatically sets up the router to be able to uh, remote play and stream. And I tried this out again on a perfect setup here with two one gig networks at my house separated. So I was able to try the local connect and the remote. It's not always going to work as well as it did for me here for everyone or for myself if I'm away from home. But you can see here remote connect and automatic now will be here. I use automatic. I hit that and then it's going to be uh, connecting via internet here. So I'll just let this go. It does take like a minute, minute and a half. So I'm going to speed this up a little bit, but then it goes to linking to testing, connecting, and then we'll be into our PlayStation. So this is an internet connection. This isn't on the same network as the PS5. So anyways, that's kind of how that's working out now. Sticking with the whole internet connection idea, that's what I have here still on my separated network connected through the automatic internet connection it has worked pretty well. I've got a few flashes here and there. Again, I haven't really adjusted much for this network, even though this should be a pretty decent setup being a separate network in the house and everything, it still is an internet connection to the PlayStation and not on the same network as a local connection. And I could definitely tell. I definitely need to tweak some more for some of those hiccups and white flashes. I also need to work on um, latency, which probably can't do a lot about. Uh, there's a little, obviously more latency here, and I'm sure like away from home or on a friend's network or somewhere else, latency is going to come in to be more of a factor and it's going to depend on what kind of game you're playing as to whether or not that's going to matter but we do have the option for an internet connection i have been able to make it work at least here anyway and that's pretty cool to see now of course the best that we're going to get as far as experience is local and big difference for me switching to my local network um, it felt much snappier it felt great and i do most of my remote play from home so luckily for me i pretty much will connect locally and for me that worked great in just a few games i was trying it no matter what, I wouldn't necessarily want to be playing something like competitive Call of Duty or something like that if I was just having some fun maybe, but a lot of games will lend themselves great to something like remote play, and we'll see. have to see how the internet connection is once more like far away from home. All right, guys, thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. As always, we really appreciate it, and we'll see you in the next one.